Okay, well, you know me. I'm not one for keeping my mouth shut. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. So, you know, being... I, I tell everybody that, you know, being old... Let me turn on my sunlight here. I got some new sunlight bulbs. Being, um... Being my age... You know, I remember past history. I remember watching a, was it 60 minutes? I don't think it was 60 minutes. I believe it was, it wasn't NPR. I cannot remember the woman doing the interview. But they were, they were driving around in Israel in a taxi. And there was a person waiting on the corner for a taxi. And the people asked why he didn't stop to pick that person up. And the guy had a derogatory name for the Palestinian that I would equate to nigger for our uh, hate-filled uh, Southern friends here. And it's always been that way. You see, Netanyahu, Netanyahu doesn't want a Palestinian state. And for me, I find that to be disgusting. I find that, I find that horrifying, okay? Because... The Jews were given a home. They were given a homeland. And since the Palestinians had no representation, it was decided, well, well that's where it's going to be because of ridiculous fucking Bible references, which is just a goddamn book, okay? It's not history. And... You know, like the dirty little note between Churchill and Stalin. The dirty little note. Deals were made at that time without much forethought. And the Palestinians, as far as I'm concerned, just got fucked. You have to remember at that time, there were still countries far flung that were under the British Empire. People forget history, okay? Uh, a lot of billionaires in the United States got their start way back in opium. The number one drug dealer on the planet was Britain, opium. They controlled the market for opium. Pe people forget history rather quickly. Either they didn't read about it in school or the curriculum didn't cover the truth well enough. I remember my wife's mother at the age of 98 asking me, Laren, could you please print out what you believe uh, I, I should read about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? Because in her late years, she was becoming confused as to what was going on. And I said, sure, Mary, I'd, I'd love to do that for you. And I printed her out maybe, oh, 80 pages. And she read it and she, she said, okay, I, I now understand. And that was it. That's all she said. Okay, I now, I now understand. So she must have had some burning questions in her mind. Like, okay, well, what was that area before it was designated the state of Israel? Who was living there? Why weren't they protected? Why, why, why were the people that were living in that area not giving representation? And why were they chosen to be the ones to get fucked? Why didn't we just cut out a piece of Missouri? 
and go, here you go. Right? Why didn't we just cut out a piece of a rack? Are you yelling? Yes, I am. I am absolutely yelling, sweetheart. Okay. Okay, all right. You see, I understand how the Israelis look at the Palestinian people. It's not good. It's derogatory. The way they talk about them is derogatory, as if they're some sort of subspecies. They talk like Nazis. Now, you can deny this all you want, but it's the truth. It's an unfortunate truth. It's a, it's a terrible truth, but it is truth. Each generation has successfully taught its children to hate each other. And it is people like Benjamin Netanyahu that promulgate this. They, they put all of the infrastructure in place for what is happening right now. You can blame on Benjamin Netanyahu. Religion. Religion is the other cause. All the holy sites. You know what? They're nothing but a stack of bricks to me. Because I understand exactly what they are. Just rocks. As far as I'm concerned, every mosque, every church, every cathedral on this planet is a waste of space. They could be better used for other means. The biggest hypocrites in the world, Catholics. Here you have the Vatican. Oh, we're our own country. Oh, really? Really? How the fuck did you manage that? Well, we did some dealing with the Nazis, etc., etc., etc. Money laundering, mafioso, pretty fucking disgusting. But you don't hear about it on the news because nobody wants to say it. I don't have any problem saying it because it's the truth. When people, you know, I, I talk about having the <laughs> the Bible thumpers come to my house. Well, you know, they stopped doing that. I don't think we've had, I think they, they, they come and they, they actually knocked on the door and asked for my granddaughter by name. Evidently, she had been contacted or whatever. But see, that's cult-like fucking behavior where they write your name down and go, here's a possible person we can suck into our cult. And when I get them, yeah, they, they're pretty fucking sorry they walked through my door. You see, we can trace all of this problem with the Palestinians and the Israelis all the way back to the end of World War II and religion. Because all of the decisions that were based were based on some fake fucking religious bullshit. Not about God. I died. I saw God. He has nothing to do with man's religion. He, there's no doubt in my mind that the pain... You know, during my near-death experience, I tell people that I, I had a shameful experience when I asked, would I be rich? And I felt the, the pain and suffering that I caused, that my words and my thoughts and my vision, that it, that it caused these supreme beings, is all I can call them, these supreme beings that were there. The thought of that, it was, it was painful for them, okay? And I can tell you that religion's the same way. The thought of religion, man's religion, the number of deaths it's caused. 90 million people directly attributed to Christianity. You got these, you have a bunch of fucking rich white guys with nothing better to do 
in England who were going to go save Jerusalem from, basically from the people that, that lived there. You know what I mean? Because they didn't believe in God the right way or they didn't believe in the right God. See? Religion, the bane of mankind. All you have to do is study a little bit of history and not worry about, you know, just go study how religions get started. I can tell you how it originally started, okay? Because man, sentient man, has always had the need to have more. I used to talk about cheek pouches. Remember that? Because monkeys having hands to carry extra wasn't enough for the animal. It's an animal. You see, luckily, we don't have cheek pouches. But you see, animals, monkeys, they develop these big cheek pouches because having hands just wasn't enough. And, it, and, and the animal in them is strong enough that, that it drove them to basically uh, develop cheek pouches because th through, through, the, through greed need. Man, since the first time he looked up in the sky and he saw this guy had a shocking revelation that, wait a minute, that bright light was over there. That was it. That was the start of religion. It's, religion is no mystery. Half of the churches in my town have pagan crosses on their roofs and they don't even know it. When you see a cross on a church with a circle, okay, that's the zodiac. That is the year divided in quarters, okay? I mean, it's, they, they don't understand it. And when, I, when I've confronted these people about it, they didn't understand it. Because they, they only want to believe what they want to believe, which is what they're told to believe. And I can tell you that religious leaders are the most dangerous, most heinous fucking individuals. Uh, look at Kenneth Copeland. Oh, I can't fly around in a jet full of demons. And this guy sold me this jet so cheap, I had to buy it. I had to buy it. With this look on his face like a fucking madman. As he uses religion to strip elderly people of their last fucking dollar. This is where religion takes you. He was born of a virgin on December 25th. His birth was announced by a star in the east and he was attended by three wise men. He was a child teacher in the temple and was baptized when he was 30 by blank the baptizer. He had 12 disciples. He performed miracles. He walked on water and transfigured on the mount. He was crucified, buried in a tomb, and three days later was resurrected. He was called the way, the truth, the light, the Messiah, God's anointed son, God's only son, the son of man, the good shepherd, the lamb of God, the word, etc. Here's another person. A thousand years difference between the two of these. He was born of a virgin on December 25th. He was considered a great traveling teacher and master. He had 12 disciples and he performed miracles. He was buried in a tomb and after three days he rose again. His resurrection was celebrated every year during his principal festival held on what would become Easter. He was called the Good Shepherd, the Way, the Truth, the Light, the Redeemer, the Savior, the Messiah. Listen, these fucking people were born a thousand years apart. There have been many, many, many Jesus figures for a reason. There's a reason why it's three days, why the Son of God is resurrected after three days. And that is because the first science was simply 
watching astrological signs in the sky because that science, that simple yet incredible science allowed people to understand what weather was going to be like. And it allowed them to plant crops reliably and thus became, you know, man's new way of living instead of being a hunter-gatherer. And the very first fucking thing that happened was some guy said, yeah, you see the sun goes over here and then it stops for three days. It's dead. But it's going to be resurrected and then it heads back the other direction. And he starts telling people that he knows why, that God talks to him, that he can predict things. You see, both these people, these aren't, this isn't Jesus. These people were born a thousand years before Jesus. Doesn't sound familiar? Born of a virgin on December 25th? His birth was announced by a star in the east? I mean, do people not understand history and how religion got started? Now, that has nothing to do with God. I died. I drowned as a child. I was dead for well over six minutes. And I saw God, and it has nothing to do with man's religion or even the way man is capable of thinking. You might as well try to teach an amoeba in a Petri dish about your telephone. How would I start explaining to an amoeba about my iPhone here? How would I do that? That is how far above humankind God is. For me, when I hear these preachers talk about, well, oh, yeah, God doesn't want you to be poor. Send me your money. People that own gigantic fucking mansions and driving Ferraris like Joel Olstein. As people are hungry, he lives in a gigantic fucking mansion that it would take you five minutes to run from one end to the other, driving a Ferrari. Oh, yeah, that's very godlike. You see, that was the embarrassment that they felt, the pain and the suffering that I caused those supreme beings that were there was because I asked would I be rich when I went back. And the picture in my mind was exactly that, big house, Ferrari, servants, especially servants. And I felt their pain. I, I, I seriously hurt them. Religion is the reason we have the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. And it's people like Benjamin Netanyahu that were just like that first fucking person who said, I'm doing this because my God is right. The way we see things is right. And the way you see things is wrong because you're a Muslim, I'm a Christian, therefore you're wrong and I'm right. And every religion says these things other than, you know, some uh, Eastern mysticism, basically, which is just the wisdom of man. And I, I see the Bible as just a transcription of that. People don't understand how the Bible came about. People don't understand how, how recent their version of the King James Bible. Why do you think they call it that? They don't call it the Jesus Bible. They don't call it the God Bible, do they? No, it's the King James Version or the Good News Version or any other fucking version of a book that doesn't understand this basic history right here. I was talking about Horus and Mithras. And there are many, many others. And it's all based on astronomy, not astrology. Astronomy. The very first science that allowed an individual to take control of other people by claiming their religious view is why what made the world go round, what greased all the axles. People will even forget what's in the Bible that they read. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, Jesus went in and turned over all the money tables. How many times do you hear these televangelists talk about that? I've never heard it. Not one time. Not one fucking time have I, have I heard about Jesus going after the money changers. Not one fucking time. And they all need big homes and jets and Ferraris. I can tell you what I would do right now. If I had a half a million dollar Ferrari, I would sell it. I would donate $400,000 to the homeless shelter down here. I would take a hundred grand and put it in the bank and try to help all my friends and family. That's who I am. If I won the lottery, 90% of it would be spent helping others. Because there is no better way to reward yourself than helping others. Benjamin Netanyahu, in my opinion, is evil. A very, very evil person. When this all got started, I don't know how many of you remember, but I said there's no need for bunker buster bombs to, to destroy these tunnels. There's no need to fucking blow up buildings. There's no need to attack the Palestinian people with a giant fucking military force. I'm against giving Israel even a fucking dime. I am against giving Israel one fucking dime. What did they do? They destroyed the homes and, and the livelihoods and the lives of innocent fucking people because what, they were too goddamn lazy? No, listen, it was a shitty fucking plan to begin with. They had the ability to go in, to map and systematically destroy the tunnel system that Hamas had spent the last 50 years building. That was their number one asset. But now they've blown up and they have basically, like World War II when, and, and Monte Carlo, when they destroyed that fucking building, all they did was create a rubble pile that was better to shoot at them from. Simple as that. And the Israelis never didn't learn anything about that, evidently. You see, they could have systematically went in, started at one end, and worked their way all the way through systematically closing off and sealing these tunnel systems. But they didn't. Brute force. And I mean brute in the sense brute. Brute force killing thousands, tens of thousands of innocent people. Um, I can tell you right now, God would not approve. The God that I saw when I was dead uh, would not approve. The supreme beings that were there with me when I died would not approve. But you have these people that are incredibly paranoid that saying something about Israel is going to make you a Zionist or, you know what I mean? It's, it's religion and polit politics have been intertwined and intertangled. Look at the white Christian nationalists in our country. They are evil. They're, they're just evil. The way they think is evil. But they can't, can't grasp that concept because they believe the bullshit they've been fucking told uh, by religious people who did it to control other men. I'm leaving. I love you. Bye. Love you, baby. Bye. Just terrible. Fucking horrible. This is what this... Horus and Mithras is what I use to destroy these people who come to my house that are going to preach religion to me. And I sit them down and I talk about the three guys walk into a bar and I want you to tell me, as soon as you understand who any of these people are, I want you to tell me. 
and they're just yelling Jesus time after time after time. And when I tell them about Horus and Mithras, I can see this switch being flipped in their head. They're trying to uh, decide right then, is this man lying to me or is everything I have believed a lie? I can see it. I can see it in their eyes. I can see it in their body motion. This one little girl was on the, her knees on the ground praying to shut out what I was saying. I felt sorry for her. But at the same time, if I can save her from a life of being in a cult, I'm willing to do that. The Israelis didn't have to do what they're doing. They didn't have to destroy uh, Palestine. They didn't have to destroy and murder all those innocent people. You're seeing stories now of people trying to surrender and they're still being fucking shot dead. They shot some of their own people fucking dead because the Palestinians and the Israelis basically hate one another. Benjamin Netanyahu, could, he could give a flying fuck if, te, if 10 babies die every day by Israeli bombs. He could give a flying fuck because they're just Palestinian babies. And to him, they're not human because, you know, I guess he forgot what Hitler did to the Israeli people. I'm old enough to have followed this and it has been important enough in my life and in my mind, having had my near-death experience. Okay, religion is something that I basically became very familiar with, into and out of, into and out of, because of my lifelong search for what happened to me. And I finally found the answers in quantum mechanics and the microtubule system and things that had to do with science had nothing to do with religion. I love, you see, none, none of these pastors want me in their churches. I, uh, if you don't know me by now, you know that I have no problem standing and going, uh, excuse me, that's not exactly correct. You are misinterpreting the Bible. Everybody, I want you to go to the back of the Bible and I want you to read what it says about changing an A or a Z. They hate me. They fucking hate me. Because I, I call out their hypocrisy. And I did it in public. In front of a lot of their cult members. You see, I don't need faith because I saw God, I know God exists. But I also, I'm so, so thankful that I understand he's not the God man created. He's not some jealous little bitch. He's not some fucking punk who murdered and wiped out whole civilizations, wiped out whole tribes of people because, well, the Israelis were given that land. God told me to go and kill all you guys because this land of milk and honey is ours because you don't believe in Jesus and God and therefore, you know, you're heathens and you have to be destroyed. Just like, sounds just like Kenneth Copeland gets up on stage and is doing this maniacal, insane laugh about Donald Trump lost the election. You see, they need politics to survive. They always have. This is the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is religion and politics. Kenneth Copeland talking about Donald Trump losing election. Let's see if we can find this. Laughter. Hopkins, John Hopkins. I don't have anything in a real bet. <laughs> Associated Press. 
said that Joe Biden is president. Ha! <laughs> Listen to the cult members all laughing with him. He knows exactly how to work them. It's maniacal. Okay, so that's pretty fucking disgusting. This is the guy who basically pillages his cult members so he can have a couple of jets. Because he doesn't want to fly around in a tube of demons. Because we're all demons. If we don't give him money, you're a demon. You see, religion is the bane of mankind. This is the Palestinian-Israeli conflict is based on politi politics and religion. The, the state of Israel was created through politics and religion. 90 million innocents have died because of the politics and religion of Christianity. I keep my list on my phone to remind me. And the Israeli people, not all of them, because you see... There are sane people in Israel. There are many, many sane people in Israel who aren't willing to be cult members. And they see when someone like Benjamin Netanyahu, just like Vladimir Putin and all these other fucking strongmen who want to change the laws of their country to benefit their power base, and their grip and their hold on power. Many protests in Israel over that. Everyone can be thankful that not everyone in Israel is like Benjamin Netanyahu. There was no need to destroy the entire fucking civilization of, of the Palestinians. There was no need to blow all those fucking buildings down. Okay? A smart, intelligent, rational plan would have been to simply do a sweep slowly and systematically cut off control and understand the tunnel system before you just blow the fuck out of it. And now you have these large areas that you can't even access easily and still allowing the Palestinians to use them effectively against you. I talked about the tunnel system being the number one asset of Hamas right from the very beginning. I know anyone who's followed my page understands that. I, I did a long video about that. That I'm hoping that they don't go in there with fucking bunker busters and all this shit. And that's exactly what they did. Hamas is not the Palestinian people any more than these radical right wing fucking Christian nationalists are, are, are the base for America. They're not. They're a fucking minority. They are a minority, and they're getting smaller every day. Why? Because, well, this generation seems to be fleeing the church. And you can thank this device right here. You see, even though ed the education system has let America down, which is pretty damn obvious, okay, um, you do notice a change in this next generation. You know, you got people like Marge, Marjorie Taylor Greene, constantly mixing religion and politics. That whole group, Bobert, religion and politics. When you see that, that is a sign of danger. Okay, that, that is a disturbed individual who wishes to use that magic to control others. How the fuck does, does Copeland get that many people into a room to laugh with him? Well, I can tell you it's not the only situation where this comes up. Do a YouTube search on f fake kung fu masters. And what you will see is some guy standing there as his students run at him, and he's going like this. Waves his hand. 
and his chi knocks this guy over. And the, he waves his hand. And this guy does a flip over here. He's so, he's blown through the air by the chi of the master. Now, who is the bigger fool? You can see how easily corrupted and cultish humans can be when you look at fake kung fu masters. These people in this group want to belong so badly that they're willing to do anything for the master, including somehow fooling themselves into thinking they're being blown away by a wave of the master's hand because of his chi. It's exactly the same thing, folks. Exactly the same thing as a room full of fucking people in, in Copeland's church. And it's all about religion and politics. When he's laughing, saying that Joe Biden isn't president with this maniacal fucking laugh where he, he basically gets his cult members to laugh with him. You see, if they didn't participate, if they didn't laugh, what would he do? If he couldn't control them completely, what would happen when he started on one of his insane rants and everybody just sat and looked at him? It, the persona would be destroyed instantly. What if the master waved his hand and somebody didn't go flying out of the way and ended up socking the guy in the fucking face as we have seen happen over and over? Benjamin Netanyahu, he's, uh, he's a war criminal. He's a war criminal. He's, a, uh, he's an evil, destructive, maniacal fucking man. The Palestinians, if, any, if anyone on the planet deserves a state, it's the Palestinians. Okay? Um, it's, for me, it's, it's, it's just a giant tragedy that was allowed to happen because of politics and religion. The worst combination, okay, the, wor the, the, the worst combination. Okay, I feel better. You know, I'm reading about how many Palestinians died this morning. I had to do this video. I had to. I, I'm thankful every day that the, pain, fr that the pain I suffer comes from my ability to think rationally.